Yep, I think we are live. Yes. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's always a, always a little tricky. You're not really sure when you're going live here, but uh, hello everybody. I am back. I am Steve. Welcome to another Mac 84 live stream where I guess we're going to print. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know what we're doing here. I wanted to do a live stream. Didn't know what really I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, so we have, we have some cool printers to look at. My hair is a mess because I haven't had a haircut, obviously. Um, who's cutting hair these days? Um, but yeah, so yes, we have, we have a little jo uh, Josh. We have an iMac G4 here, which is nice. This is a little 15-inch iMac G4. And uh, we're going to be going over some, some fun things today. Uh, let me close some windows here and just rearrange my space. So I know it's a little later than what I usually stream, but um, you know, that's just how my schedule was today. I spent a lot of time today uh, cleaning up in my garage, uh, found some goodies, um, unfortunately found some stuff that was kind of destroyed, um, but that's what happens when you leave things in the garage. Hey Jay, hey Matt, hey another Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah so um pro tip for all of you who have garages or any place where mice could get in there um <laughs> make sure you use a container with a lid uh unfortunately uh mice love to crumple up paper and make nests and stuff and anything soft whether it's a blanket or a shirt or something and yeah so i had quite a few uh mice in my garage thankfully i have none in the basement or the attic or anything like that um, but yeah, they, they chewed on some things I really wish they wouldn't have, but it is what it is. So, okay. I am testing some open core on your channel. Uh, well, it doesn't hurt yet. So, uh, keep testing Brock. <laughs> oh, let me, uh, move this window down so I can actually read. I'm awake for the stream. Okay. So this time slot works for some people then. <laughs> hello, Alex. Uh, hello, Code Valian. And, uh, yeah. So... I have um, a fascination with dot matrix printers, which I don't think surprises any of you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to be looking at some printers today, not just dot matrix printers, but you know, printers that I find interesting. Um, I have a little typewriter here, what we'll be looking at in a bit. I have uh, an Apple style writer that's a, a style writer that probably a lot of people have not seen. Um, so that's going to be interesting to play around with. And then I have this behemoth, which is like breaking my legs to hold it on. Ugh. This is the original Apple Image Writer dot matrix printer. Ah, just look at this thing. Oh boy, this is boxy as boxy gets. And uh, yeah, this is uh, quite the behemoth. Oh boy, it is not nearly as stylish as the Image Writer 2. Uh, it doesn't do color like the Image Writer 2. And uh, it's apparently slower and less reliable than the Style Writer 2. But it is an Apple Image Writer. It has seen some better days. This is very yellowed. Um, I can see some of the original coloring on the side of this plastic here. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a heavy beast. Um, what this costs new, hold on, I had it written down here because I knew somebody would ask. Oh, now my phone's doing that thing of, hey, let's act up because you need the information now. <laughs> but yeah, so the, the Image Writer uh, 2 is the one I'm more familiar with, but uh, because I almost share a birthday with it. But this, let's bring this up here, printers. Right, here it is. Yeah, so this was introduced in June 1984. Hey, Bruce, welcome to the party. So this original image writer is from June 1984, so it came out a few months uh, after the first uh, Macintosh was introduced, or well, let's see, when was the first Mac introduced? I, th I know it was 84. I know the advertisement one is in uh, January. Let me use my cheat sheet here. Yep, yeah, January 84. Okay, yep, so this came out just a little bit after that. And let's see uh, what exactly it sold for, because you know these things ain't cheap. But uh, there were quite a few printers that Apple made before this. 675 US dollars. Uh, and adjust that for inflation on your own. <laughs> but yeah, so this, this thing uh, only really sold for a year. It was discontinued in 85, uh, which was interesting because the ImageWriter 2 
uh, replaced it, and that sold. Guess how long the Image Rider 2 sold for? Introduced in 1985, September 1985. And, um, yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. So while you're guessing, let me uh, let me just do uh, the first EEP of April. So that the first EEP goes to Greg Ruckey of Ruckey Mods. Thank you very much for the super chat. And I, I put I put the text in the group chat we have for Mac Yak. So if you, if you don't read that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I also put on Discord. Oh, I forgot to tweet it out. Wait, did I? Hold on. <laughs> you could tell I'm a little rusty at this. Oh boy, it's it's been a been a bit. Because <laughs> things are hard to do. All right, Josh looked it up. Late 1996. <laughs> yeah. So this this printer, um, the Image Writer 2, rather, uh, was whoa. I'm multiplying myself on my phone as I'm trying to share the. The link discreetly, how terrible I failed. Um, yeah, the Image Rider 2 was, set, was sold forever. It sold for, for over 10 years, which is insane. Um, and that was just when it was discontinued. I'm sure others, you know, were continuing to sell that machine uh, well after. And it was just a workhorse of a, of a machine. But uh, here we have the Image Rider 1 today. Maybe we'll do a comparison. Uh, the, the Image Rider 2 is very heavy. Uh, as well as this one. So I don't know if I'm going to be dragging it over to the desk or anything like that. But we'll see. We'll see. Any, any of you, any of you have ever owned an Apple printer, whether it's a, an image writer or a style writer? Hey, Greg. And the other Greg. Hello, Greg. <laughs> Hello, Greg. 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 Well, Taj, it's the exact same time it is for you, it is for me. And I don't know why I'm here either. But there's a camera and there's old printers. So I, I think I'm legally obligated to be here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, have any of you um, actually used any Apple of Apple's printers, whether, whether it be any new printers, any, well, not new, but, you know, laser printers, um, anything that's to do with printers that Apple produced? Um, I mean, I, I quite, I, I've used quite a few of them. Um, just checking the chat here. Uh, Bruce says he's used, a, he's owned an Image Rider 1 and 2. And uh, Jay said he used them in school, never owned one. Nolan said uh, he's used the same printer. And uh, Taj says he haven't used any. Ah, the laser writer too. Now, I actually do have um, a few laser writers here. Um, I, don't have, I don't have... I don't have anything too crazy. I have one of the select models, which was like one of the cheaper ones. And then I have... Um, I forget what it is. Let me, let me see if I can read the read it off the. It's in the distance here. Nope, I can't read it. Um, I thought I could read it, but it's it's a whoops. It's uh, I think it's like a, a personal or something like that. It, it's not the the best one, but why can't I type this today? Sorry guys. Um, yeah. So interesting. Yeah. So I mean, whenever we've had um printers at school or the office or whatever um you know they usually weren't apple ones because you know apple stopped making printers you know years and years and years ago so i only remember using apple printers at home when i was a kid or in school uh when apple printers were popular and and you know for the most part apple would just rebrand an existing print engine from canon or fuji or or uh you know different other brands at the time and uh you know they have some nice features you know the laser printers were were pretty good um but uh you know i just have fond memories of playing around with them unfortunately uh the inkjet varieties the style writers they're a little hard to get ink for these days a lot of them um actually could use some canon ink tanks but um even getting those these days are a little bit difficult oh a bunch of chat here let's catch this up here uh, used the Image Rider 2 in school? Yep. <laughs> We've all been waiting for this day. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Dana. Nice of you to join me. I, I love Dana's photoshopping of these crazy uh, contraptions that Apple may have made back in the 90s. Excellent work there, Dana. <laughs> Feel free to link to your Twitter in the chat there. Just put it in the chat because those those are pretty funny. I, I love the one with the laser disc player. That was that was awesome, awesome. 
<laughs> the image writer needs a laser disc. Yeah, just just put that in there. Oh boy. Yeah. So um, we're gonna try and do a few things here, and um, I have a quick take. Maybe we could print from a quick take. <laughs> it won't be in color, but. <laughs> You feel free to put the Twitter URL in there so people can click on it, Dana. You don't have to, but it's oh, I'm lazy and I like to just click on things. But Okay, so um, what we're going to do is I want to show you this little typewriter here, which won't take long. And then maybe we'll plug this thing in here. But this typewriter, uh, I think I've, I've shared it on Twitter once or twice. I uh, definitely shared it with the Mac Yak uh, crew there. Um, but what's cool about that is uh, a few things. So let me lift this off the desk here. That is uh, one solid piece of machinery. <laughs> and uh, we have this. Now, where did the appropriate power cord go? Yep, here we go. So let's, uh, let's bring this a little bit closer. Okay. And yeah, let's move the camera around. All right. So I'm going to explain what this is. This is a little typewriter, essentially. It's a word processor. And uh, what's nice is... Uh, it has a little screen, so you can sort of make corrections and reread what you're doing uh, before you press the little print button, and it will print on the page. Now, this is very interesting. It is a thermal printer, so it has a little um, uh, ribbon, but apparently also it can print on thermal sheets of paper, which is interesting. Now, the thermal sheets that came with this are sort of not working, but um, let me see if I could take this paper out. It's noisy, so I love it. Uh, we could see what drives this here. And let me reroute the camera cable here. Here we go. So we have this little uh, wheel here. I believe it's a thermal printer. Um, yeah, and just it's a very little interesting device, and we'll we'll play around with it in a little bit, and you'll see how it works. Um, do I have an Apple IIc or an Apple IIe? I do have an Apple IIc and an Apple IIe. Unfortunately, my Apple IIc, uh, I destroyed the fuse inside of the power brick. So, um, yeah, I had to fix that before I could really play around with it. But I do have an Apple IIe. Um, and, yeah, the Apple IIs will actually work with those image riders I showed before. Uh, what's funny is I actually have a manual for an image rider. I think it's an image rider 2. And it lists a bunch of computers that it's compatible with on the manual. It lists the Lisa, it lists the Apple II, it lists the Apple III, and it lists the Macintosh. <laughs> so that printer was just like compatible with everything that Apple produced. It was pretty cool. So I'm going to show you sort of how this works. I'm going to put that down here. Uh, we're going to put in a piece of paper. Okay, now this can run on batteries. Let me show you that real quick. Uh, we won't be doing that today because I don't like uh, putting in batteries if I don't have to. Oh, there's there's some batteries already in there. There's uh, there's yeah, we gotta clean that out. Uh, I should not have touched that. Looks like four D cell batteries, which I definitely don't have on hand, and I'm definitely not gonna replace. <laughs> but yeah, we gotta replace this. Get them out of the machine at least. Oh boy, <laughs> the blurst of times. <laughs> uh, yep, yep, the Image Rider 2 would be a very good companion for an Apple II, especially uh, if you're trying to be economical. <laughs> so we have a power cord here that'll turn this thing on so we don't have to uh, use up uh, plenty of our batteries here. But I'm going to get to a few cool things about this, then we'll, we'll try and move on to the Image Riders. Uh, and I do have a, a style writer uh, that I want to show you. So we're just going to be playing around with a bunch of things here. Feel free to ask questions. This is sort of a, you know, a nice Saturday evening, whatever. Um, let's hope this power cord over here has a... Uh, oh, wait. There's a power slot on my foot here. There we go. All right. So let's get the camera a little bit closer. And uh, we're going to point down for a little bit. There we go. Ah, yes, and thank you. Yes, I, I do have my little iMac G4 here. Uh, this iMac is on. There we go. It works pretty well. Uh, there's unfortunately a pretty gnarly scratch on the screen there, but 
seems to work pretty well anyway. Um, okay, so I'm going to just show you these things for a little bit, and then uh, we'll play around. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, so the, the image writers can be networked. There was uh, an Apple Talk option for those, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, uh, yeah. Yes, Bruce is always watching. And uh, this iMac is getting a little jealous, so it's going to you know, say, Stop that! <laughs> But yes, the eye of Bruce is always watching. Make sure I put extra flux on everything. Uh, my favorite Apple printer. Well, see, that's the thing. I I, I love the Image Writer too, um, because I, I just have a fondness for it. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if I really have a favorite of any others. I, I after the Image Writer two, at, at my family we had a twenty four hundred style writer, um, and I wouldn't call it a favorite though. It was pretty neat. Um, I never really played around with the laser riders that much, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I guess the image rider tool will be my favorite for now, but, uh, I do want to get those. Yes, what Greg is mentioning, they did have some plotter ones, they did have a daisy wheel printer, silent type printer, there's a bunch of weird Apple printers that I would not mind having just to play around with it, so. Yes, there's, there's no such thing as too much flux until you get it all over your desk and forget to clean it off, and then everything gets sticky, and you have to use... Uh, you know, alcohol or something to clear it off. And, and this stuff is like worth its weight in uh, gold right now. So, yeah. Okay. Please print this. Rest in peace, Commodore. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll take some requests to print things in a second. But let's let's turn this on here and I could uh, give you an idea of how this works. So there's a power switch on the right here. We're going to flick that on. You can see that sort of twitch there. Um, and we have a little display. So it's unfortunately quite awkward to get this camera in here because of the way my desk has a cut in for me to sit in it and not a camera and me, but uh, we'll do the best we can here. Okay, so uh, what's interesting, like I said before, there's this little screen here. And so you can actually see what you're typing. So I can say, hello, YouTube. And if I detach the camera or let's see if I move it, nah. Yeah, you can kind of see that there. It says, hello, YouTube there, which is nice. Um, yes, digital zoom is uh, the devil. And uh, <laughs> as, as someone who is, you know, uses a, a regular, uh, not a regular, but, a, you know, a, a nice DSLR camera. And that, but yes, I am wearing pants. Those are just my knees. Um, I'm wearing shorts. Um, digital zoom is horrible, but no, no. <laughs> Digital zoom is just like using the zoom feature in Photoshop. It's good for some purposes, but uh, I will take the camera off of here to give you a better look-see. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, how this works is you type in a message, and there are two modes to this thing. So you can either press each letter, and as you press each letter, it will type, uh, or you could type in um, a set of you know characters, and then press return. Okay, it only uh, it only did the word hello. I mean, it only did the letter H. Let me, let me turn this off and turn it back on again. Sometimes it's a little temperamental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It likes to beep at you too. And the manual is quite comprehensive. There we go. So if I bring this up a bit, you will see. That it says, hello, YouTube. Look at that. <laughs> and there's that H that it printed out erroneously. But uh, hello, Scarlet Swordfish. Nice to, to have you here. Enhance, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's a pretty neat little thing. I actually, um, I actually got quite fond of using one of these, and I was writing letters to a few people. Um, I wrote a letter to Ronald Wayne, uh, the famous co-founder of Apple who, you know, sold his stock <laughs> and share in the company, uh, very, very shortly after buying it. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was nice. I, I sent him a letter. I typed it on this, and he sent a letter back, which was very nice. Uh, also print this. Internet connections is better with Ethernet. Well, I have to say, are better with Ethernet, but... Uh... <laughs> so I could say, uh, yes, see, uh, Grudy should always use Ethernet. Why Fi is for st stinkers. Love you, Gertie. 
<laughs> so you heard a little beep there, and I'll explain what that beep does in a second. But um, so since you have the little screen here, what this device does is it tries to make uh, make you aware of what you're what you're actually uh, limited to typing on here. And yes, this is very quiet. It's not like a dot matrix printer, which we will hear in a little bit, which is not quiet. Hello, Jacob. And so what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to I'm going to try and showcase this as best I can. Um, yeah, let, you know, let me just bring this a little closer and point the camera a little down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type a very long sentence. And what that's going to do is it's going to uh, make some noises. And I'll explain what those noises are as I go along. So uh, I'm going to type a very long line of text. So you heard that beep. If you heard that beep, uh, basically what that says is, hey, you only have a few more characters here on this line. So if I continue typing, see, I typed like three or four more characters and it beeped again and I can no longer type anymore. And so you see I said, if this machine will beep, period, space, will, and I was going to type something else, but I ran out of space. So if I continue trying to type, it's not going to be so happy there. So what I'm going to do is, Delete, press return. And now if I want, I can continue typing the next line. And it's pretty quiet. I mean, you hear the little motor of the thing uh, carrying the, uh, the print head device thingy around, but yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little typewriter. It's a Canon Type Star 7. Um, I always mix up word processors and typewriters. Uh, a lot of the ones from this era, um, you know, may have had some method of saving uh, the text or something like that. And I guess those are more word processors because you could, you know, you could have a disk, you could save uh, whatever you're working on, you could load it, you could print it out. Now this thing is not just a typewriter. It does well. It is, but you know, it has a, it's a little bit uh, other features that will go on. I will not type that. No. <laughs> yeah, the keyboard is is a is a good sound too, which is nice. Um, what's nice is with this device, you have the ability to um, sort of memorize some, I guess, words or phrases if you want to. Um, and so if I wanted to, and, and I don't have the manual in here, so I'm not going to do that, but um, you do have the ability to, to memorize some things, which is nice. Uh, print subscribe to Mac 84. Well, we could do that. Of course we can. Excellent suggestion, Gritty. I'm not used to this keyboard. Shift, there we go. And what's nice is, you know, even if I'm done with this, now that is noisy. Even if I'm done with this, I could put the page back in when I'm done. But there we go. Subscribe to Mac84. Oops. I, <laughs> I missed the 8 there, but I managed to spell Greg's channel correctly. So that's yeah, just my luck for me. But <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's. <laughs> that's what happens there. Uh, let's see. Can it act like a typewriter and print each letter as you type it? Yes, it can. I will show you that if I can remember how to, how to change that mode here. So we're going to feed the paper in here. The problem is if you don't feed it in just right, it's going to uh, be off, off center and, and tilted there. Okay, so let's change the uh, the way it's it's typed here. There is a mode. Um, yeah, see, there's character and line. So this this little screen here, and I don't know if the camera's going to focus because it, it does hate me with with all of its passion here. The bottom here, there's sort of like almost like a uh, an old LCD game or a calculator would have these little uh, preset areas where you know you would see that there's uh, a predefined uh, character or icon that would display 
and the, the, the mixture of the lights above and the reflections is not helping here. But anyway, this is where you sort of set your modes, because you only have one line to type on. But, um, yeah, let's, let's try and change it to that character mode. Let's see if I remember how to do that. Uh, so we do mode, okay. Um, and that's not what I wanted. Uh, mode. Okay, and then C, and then we'll leave the rest there. You, there are some different fonts, so um, I think it's it's Courier that the, this font is currently at. I haven't figured out how to really change that much. Uh, this year, uh, I think it's the... You know, I want to say... Well, let's actually... Let's not guess. It might have it on the bottom here. Um, I don't believe it does, actually. I looked it up at one point. Um, yeah, unfortunately, there is no year on this thing. If I were to guess, I would guess this is late 80s, early 90s. Because uh, they made tons of these things, different models and such. Um, anyway, uh, so I changed this, I believe, into character mode. So uh, if I were to type... Yep, so as soon as I type a letter... And this is much noisier... And I don't think, yeah, my spelling is terrible here because I was just typing away. But I wrote, hello, Jay, this is much more noisier than I would have expected. So, yes, it is noisier, um, but I guess it is faster. Um, and you do have these arrow buttons here, so I can move the print head around if I wanted to. So if I wanted to type in the, in the center, I could do a tab. I can move back a little bit. It's pretty cool when you type so fast that it's still going, like, after you're doing it, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Dr. Google says about 1987. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that, that sounds about right. But, um, yeah, this thing is pretty neat. Um, there are some additional options here. I do want to show you one thing, which maybe we'll get to play around today. I have never tested this feature, but apparently, let's get the little camera down here. So this thing also looks pretty sweet. There was a, a cover made for these that would cover this and sort of give you a handle. Unfortunately, I do not have that, but for the price I paid for this, I'm extremely satisfied anyway. Um, there's a few op extra options on here. Um, this little door here, what is that? Oh, that is just a serial port, isn't it? So apparently you could plug this into a printer so if for some reason you didn't want to use the built-in printing functionality here, um, you could actually print to an external printer. Now, I've never tested this. I don't know what printers it supports. The manual is extremely scarce if, of information. Excuse me. It's extremely uh, scarce of information. It does not really tell you how to print or anything else like that. So, um, yeah, that's going to be something curious to, to think about. Um, but... What I want to do, there we go, is show you one more thing. Oh, here I am hitting buttons and everything. Well, let me turn the printer off. Okay, and on this side here, I believe so, yeah. On this side, there's a little cartridge slot. So you could have, uh, I think there were little ROM uh, cartridges that you put in there. I think uh, some were... I think maybe one was a dictionary or something like that, something along those lines, or um, or maybe it was a memory expansion. I have to check the manual again. Um, I think the memory expansion allowed you to save some stuff, uh, you know, if you're writing a few pages or whatever. Uh, this one does not have uh, anything in there, but I like this little button too. You press it, and the little thing opens up, which is pretty neat. So again, I just like the look and feel of this. It's not an Apple thing, but it is pretty neat. Um, let me just catch up on the chat here because I've been messing around with this little typewriter. Yes, it is very satisfying. <laughs> yes, it is a good button. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I wanted to show you about this little thing here. Um, what does this do? 
I don't know what that switch does. There's a lot of things on here that the manual is is pretty in depth, so I have to read it. There's this code button here. You could type all these different things. You could indent. You could define a hot zone. You could, I don't know. You could. This is a feed paper. Oh, let me turn this on. I maybe it automatically feeds paper too. Let's see. Oh, look at that. You can't really control it too much, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this this thing is full of surprises. Um, a few, maybe it was a few years ago at this point. Uh, I don't know what type of key switch these are. They they are pretty clicky. Um, I'm not about to pry a key off live on camera here because uh, this thing is in pretty good condition. Uh, I did get this at a uh, thrift store. And they originally had a price of $75 on the device. And um, I, I was like, not in any stretch of the imagination going to pay $75 for this thing. It was cool, but I was not going to pay $75 for this. Uh, it did come with a stack of paper, uh, thermal paper, I believe. It did come with a manual, did come with an extra ribbon, uh, and came with the power cord and some other goodies. But it was $75. Bucks, and I'm not going to get it get it for 75 bucks so uh, I think I went uh, there a few days later or a week later and um, I went to plug it in because I just wanted to mess around with it and it wouldn't turn on and so I'm messing around with it and the lady saw me uh, come in there before to play around with it and um, you know th then saw me uh, later on trying to plug it in and stuff and uh, I couldn't get the thing to turn on and she was you know Kind of looking at it and says, oh, so you like that computer there? And I said, well, actually, it's it's just a it's a little typewriter. And she said, oh, I thought it was a computer because there's that little screen. I said, oh, no, it's, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't save. It doesn't run any programs or anything. It's basically a typewriter with some maybe smart features in there. And she said, oh, I thought it was, you know, one of those those uh, Commodores or those Apples, you know. It looked like a, you know, a, a computer to her. And I said, no, it's a, you know, it's a Canon. And so I was messing around with it more. I got it to turn on for a quick second. But it, it wasn't really uh, cooperating there. And uh, so she said, well, if, if you want it, it's been sitting there for a while. You could have it for $10. So I'm like, you know what? For $10, I will take it. So uh, that was a pretty good deal for this little thing. And it's uh, in pretty good good shape. It was only missing uh, the uh, cover, which I think might have been an optional thing. Because uh, that would have had a handle on it. Whoop. Uh, there are these little feet here. That you could put this down so uh, it... it does sort of rest up a little bit but not too much um but yeah that's uh that's sort of the story of how i got this thing uh so for ten dollars that is definitely a good deal on my book i am going to unplug it from the, the wall here and uh, just in case any of you find one of these and you need the power adapter uh this is a, a center pin negative power adapter and this is a 12 watt 800 milliamp power supply so uh, let that focus there for a second. If uh, any of you are in need of one of these power adapters, those are the specifications for this particular adapter. Come on. Oh, come on. This camera hates me. I'm too lazy to use the webcam settings. There we go. That's whatever. I've read it anyway. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've I'm always been the type of person where... You know, especially if you're getting something secondhand, you don't always have the power cord. So it's always good to know what power cord is the right one. You don't want to mix up your center pin if it's negative or positive, depending on what it's expecting. You don't want to. You don't want to mix that up. Okay, so oh, that is loud. So that's uh, one thing. Uh, let me stand up and put this aside, and uh, I will be back in a second with the uh, next thing we're going to look at. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to look at today is this beautiful box. It's not just a box. It has some has some awesome things inside too. So this you might have seen in uh, the iMac video I did not too long ago. I was talking about printing to serial devices, and this is one of the printers I featured. 
So let me uh, move the chat window here because I can't see my own stuff. <laughs> now this was pretty good. I got this. Um, geez, oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that data. Yeah, this this is a pretty neat find. Uh, I got this printer. Oh, geez. I think it was 2009 or 2010 uh, or something like that at the Trenton Computer Festival. I think I paid 7 or $8 for it. Um, it's pretty complete, which is nice, but for all those years, it's sort of just sat on my shelf. Um, so I I'm going to spin the box around and let you have a good look at it because this thing is pretty neat. And so this is a color style router to 2200 for mobile professionals. <laughs> and it's colored like a power book. So it's supposed to be, you know, matched with your power book, but you could use it, you know, on your, with your desktop as well. So some of the key features here, um, this uh, says prints to your Macintosh, I'm sorry, prints your Macintosh documents in crisp black and vibrant colors, prints quietly and quickly up to five pages per minute, comes in a compact lightweight design, Supports ColorSync 2.0, Apple's color matching technologies. Uh, gives you a choice of 64 true type fonts. So this uh, has a copyright date of 1995. Uh, the model or the, the package here is uh, 602-1504A. And what's nice is you get some pictures on the side. This is just a little bit ripped here, but uh, there's still a barcode here. I bet if I scan that in, I could sort of brighten that up a bit. Um, the other side here, I always, I always love reading these things. Uh, so this says, uh, yeah, it's printer documents in full color. Um, Apple's 720 by 360 dot per inch edge smoothing technology. Uh, five black and white pages per minute, one color page in less than three minutes. Uh, includes a built-in 30 sheet automatic paper feeder that handles plain or coated paper, transparencies and envelopes. Comes in a compact portable design that weighs only 3.1 pounds. Uh, offers you a choice of 64 fonts. Uses specially formulated inks that are water resistant and light resistant. Supports QuickDraw GX software and PowerPC processor based computers. Comes with a one year warranty. Pretty neat stuff. So on the back here, uh, it's just talking about the true color stuff. This is talking about how portable it is. Uh, there's an optional battery attachment an optional universal power adapter. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. Talking about Color Sync 2, and it's talking about how fast it is. So let's quit reading the box and let's open the box. Yeah, I believe this does uh, simply use Canon's uh, cartridges there, but this thing is is pretty neat. Let's, uh, let me get the camera a little bit closer here because uh, it is pretty complete in the box. It's not, it's not full, it's not, uh, you know, doesn't have everything, but uh, it's pretty good. So inside we have, let me just tilt it forward a little bit. Inside we have the printer and then we have this little box here. So let's take out the little box first. I believe this is a power adapter here. Oh, <laughs> we got an ink tank. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Yeah, this is a uh, model is uh, M3911G slash A. Uh, and this is the uh, the color color tanks there. All right, let's open this up. Oh, yep. So we got the power cord here. We'll put that aside. And uh, I'll take the printer out, then we'll, we'll get a better look at everything here. is the tiniest little printer I've ever seen, I believe. Look at that. Look at that. The power brick is just like a good portion of this thing. Uh, let's let's compare this to something that, uh, here. Here's a floppy disk. It is about three floppies in, uh, in width there and about almost uh, one and a half floppies in depth. Very good way to measure things. Everybody has a floppy. <laughs> but yeah, so the design of this thing is pretty neat. So this is your paper feeder. So let's uh, be careful here. There we go. Ah, look at that. That's beautiful. And uh, then we have our little paper tray, I believe, if this wants to come out. Being very careful here. I don't want to 
don't know about that. Actually, no, I don't think it has a, a paper tray there. Maybe not. I don't want to break anything, but... Uh, yeah, I don't have the, it doesn't have the booklet or anything, it doesn't have the manual, uh, it doesn't have any floppies or anything uh, for the software or the fonts, but uh, that's stuff I should be able to easily find online. Uh, I know Canon made similar ones of these, even later on they made some USB thin ones, which are pretty neat, but uh, this is just, I just love the coloring of this, it matches the power books. Uh, let's look in the back here. Uh, so we have uh, just two ports. So we have a... Uh, DC uh, 13 volt power in connector and uh, we have a uh, just our regular Apple serial connector here now what's interesting is this is a little it looks like it's a little uh, compartment I'm curious if at one point they made an Apple talk module or at least maybe planned to have this be like uh, you know Apple talk compatible or something like that because um, yeah, that would have been interesting. Uh, there's a screw hole here. Um, I'm going to assume you would maybe plug into this and there'd be that battery pack. Uh, I'll have to look up pictures, I'm sure. There's uh, some old photos of the battery pack. But um, I don't know if the, this has any ink in there. Uh, here we go. Yeah, so let, let me close this. Let me, let me plug it in first. I don't think I've plugged this in in a long time. I don't even know if I plugged it in when uh, when I did that iMac video, but uh, let's take a look at the power supply here. It's a it's a unique looking one. Uh, has a, a yellow tip here, not unlike the the uh, pair of speakers I have in the 2500 style writer, but it might be a different power supply and such. But this is a 40 watt, uh, 13 volt, 2.1 amp with a, a positive center pin there, so that is. Uh, Come on, focus, please. Ah, come on. We're gonna, we're gonna play this game all the, all throughout tonight. Cause that's not gonna be a, a good one. There we go. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna plug this in here. Right and uh, let's see if this thing turns on. How about that? <laughs> uh, this does not have the battery. There was an optional battery attachment which did not come with this. Okay, so we have it plugged in. And okay, I didn't even touch the power button. And it started to go crazy. Hello, David. Thank you for joining. Uh, so I didn't even touch the power button. As soon as I plugged it back back in, you heard all those noises. I'm going to push the power button here. Okay, good. So we got the power light on. I wouldn't necessarily call that quiet. <laughs> I mean, maybe quieter than a dot matrix printer, but you're still going here. What's going on? <laughs> this is a little chatty little thing, aren't you? All right, now it's a little excessive. What are you doing? I just turned you on. <laughs> I can wait here all day. Is that it? You're still blinking. What's going on? Yeah, it must be doing a self-test, but it's like... <laughs> it's a little bit drawn out. <laughs> Alright, so let's, let's see. I guess we'll just wait. Alright, so I'm going to open the front door here to see uh, what ink cartridge is installed. Oh, look at that. We have uh, a black and a color. So let's... To look, take a look here. Oh, come on. Uh, one of these days. So, we have a little black ink tank here. And, alright, I'm opening the darn, the darn focus tool because this is just absurd. When I don't 
do a live stream and I want the camera to focus, it's perfectly fine. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's change the focus here. Let's, let's manually adjust it. There we go. So we see uh, we have a little black ink tank, which is very tiny, and a little color ink tank, which is a little larger. But I am certain that these ink tanks are completely dead. There's not even any, you know, sense in trying to print something from these. The, these things have been sitting in someone's garage or someone's basement, and then it came to me. So, yeah. Oh, I love, yeah, I love the Apple uh, Garamond font there. Yeah, so that's that's nice. Um, I wonder, let's see if we could take the, the black one out. Look look how tiny that is. Look, what, do you, what could you print, like two pages? <laughs> I mean, yes, I know this thing is supposed to be portable and everything, but, oh, they, they, I'm sure Apple, uh, nickel and dimed you on, <laughs> on, on the ink for this thing. Wow. Wow. This, this weighs nothing either. This is just, yeah, enabled draft setting is right. But I'm sure this one isn't too much better. Wow. I mean, it is a feat of engineering, especially in the mid-90s, to get something this small. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, it's just my commentary. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's put the camera back on the tripod for a second here. And uh, let me change the focus settings again. And because I am curious what's in this box. Uh, it looks like it has been opened. There's some stress marks here. Um, remove protective cap before using. Do not unpack ink tank until you plan to use it. Keep out of reach of children. Good advice. Okay, so... Oh. How about that? It's still sealed. So, I have no doubt this is... Uh, <laughs> this is expired, you know, and probably no longer works. But um, I'm not going to be testing on this live stream because I want to actually have a machine set up where we can print to it and stuff. But uh, yeah, I'll have to open this one of these days maybe. I don't know. If, or maybe I'll be like one of those crazy people that sells it brand new in box on eBay and asks for $24,000. <laughs> As seen on Mac 84. Brand new ink. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I mean, I like the Apple Garment font in, in Apple's products. It's very nostalgic to me. But, uh, yeah, so this printer is pretty neat. It's very small and compact. Is it, you're going to do your whole checkup, checkup again because I removed the ink tanks? No? No, I'm surprised. Okay, but, oh, yep, there it goes. <laughs> it's going to do this all night, folks. But, uh, yeah, look at that. That's that's very very tiny. It's it's about the thickness of a power book. You know, if I had a like a fifty three hundred or a, or fourteen hundred or something, um, that would that would be nice. Is a bottle of alcohol also in Garamond? It is not. This is whatever fonts they're using. That that ain't Apple Gar uh, Apple Garamond though. <laughs> Expires January twenty twenty two. Good to know. Yes, it looks like a short PowerBook 190. It is very cute, and uh, if needed, Dana, I might uh, I might take some uh, some photos of this thing so you could Photoshop a handheld version. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah. So I'm, you know, I don't have a, a Mac set up to print to this. Um, but where does that stop me before? The, the problem is, find I, I don't think this driver was you know readily available in the system software, so I'd have to. You'll find the driver package. Um, I will likely, you know, see, I, if I had a, a classic Mac set up here, I have an OS X machine here. Um, I'd have to get the serial adapter and do all that stuff. But uh, it's so tiny. It's so tiny. But, yeah, I like this thing a lot. It is very compact. I could totally see uh, someone taking this on their business trip or traveling with it if they needed to because... I mean, back in 1995 or so, laptops weren't much thinner than this, so it wouldn't be unheard of to carry one of these with you in your laptop bag. So, 
yeah, this is pretty neat. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Macintosh Garden has the drivers for it. Um, I'm just trying to think because a lot of the, the laptops I have have dead hard drives. Uh, so I have an iBook, but that has a USB port. I have to use the, the key span adapter and all that fun stuff. But um, yeah, um, yeah. You know what? Let's let's try it. Why the heck not? I'm gonna regret this. I know I am. But let's see if this iMac. Uh, let's let's look on this iMac's hard drive here. Let's wait it wake it up here. There we go. And let's go to. Yeah. So OS9 unfortunately is not installed on this iMac. That's gonna be a problem. Um. But we could get an iBook in here and 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 boot nine on there. I'm sure, I'm sure this this little puppy still works. And who wants to try that? Otherwise, we'll move on to something else. But I, it's not going to print. That's the thing. It's it's not going to print. I'm not going to open the ink t ink tank. It's just going to send a signal to the printer. It might not even print because it probably detects it doesn't have ink with it, uh, ink on those cartridges anymore. But I'll leave it to you guys. You're you're you're. <laughs> You're the audience here. You have some participation. <laughs> so the option is try a print to it, um, see what the heck happens, or move on, look at the next printer in this crazy circus. Yeah, the ink is probably very, very stale. <laughs> All right, Dana, no worries. Yeah, maybe, uh, you know, maybe I could find some uh, ink for this on eBay. Um, or I could find a compatible ink printer, uh, ink cartridge rather. And, uh, yeah, we could play around with that once we have some known good ink. Maybe that would be a good idea. Oh boy, yeah, this, looking through, uh, hard drives and testing them. That is a fun thing to do. That is a very fun thing to do. Alright, so let's unplug this. Ah, oh, there we go. And uh, let's put this little guy back in its in its box there. Oh, you know what? This was this was wired. This was wrapped up in a certain way. So let me let me try and put it back in a certain way. How about that? We have 18 people here and 16 likes. Thank you very much for the attention. And the lovely audience here today. I very much appreciate it. That is very interesting. I have a, a, a Synology disk station. It's an older one. So it's running version 5.2 or something like that. Um, and I, I've connected from like system 8.6 or so. But I haven't, haven't tried uh, system 7. I'll have to play around with that. <laughs> oh, okay, so you have to use a shorter password. Yeah, I'm sure there's some caveats with that. Uh, I have trouble connecting, you know, just, uh, just uh, you know, old, uh, an older Mac to a, a newer Mac sometimes. But oh, All right, let's get the box back over here. Ah, okay. Apple Share Workstation Software. Sounds exciting. Oh. Okay. There's little cardboard holders here. That would be very cool if you were to write an article and share it. I would definitely read that. <laughs> All right. That's a little nice uh, Mac OS logo here. There's a little Energy Star logo there. Pretty neat stuff. All right, so let me stand up and put this away. And uh, maybe I'll get the, uh, I'll put the original image writer back on the table. We'll see if that has any good uh, ribbon in it. How about that? Okay, so, speak of the devil. Oh.
Oh my goodness. I didn't really look at the bat bottom of this thing, but uh, yeah, <laughs> ah, not a small machine. Oop. If I didn't just put the other one away, I would have compared the size. But this 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 is at least <laughs> double the thickness uh, <laughs> and double the depth of that that little thing. Uh, is that Mac a 17 inch? No, this is a 15 inch iMac. And this is, let's look at the specs here, for those of you who are curious. I'm pretty sure this is just a stock machine. Whoop. Oh, I'm oh, pushing a button there. Uh, this is an 800 megahertz uh, with 256 megabytes of memory. So, yeah, just a, a stock uh, iMac G4 there. Not a bad little machine. Okay, let me grab uh, a power cord here. I should have one by my feet. Yes, I do. Because I want to try and turn this thing on. Um, I believe there was a self-test mode. So even with uh, no machine connected, we should be able to see if we could print on this thing. So, oh boy, even just turning this is a little bit, a little bit difficult. Oh boy. Now this thing is, oh, I almost pinched my finger in there. Ow. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. All right. So let's, uh. Let me see if I can get my, some slack on this microphone here. There we go. Because uh, you don't want to cover your ears for this. But let's turn this on. All right. That was pretty quiet. <laughs> so um, there's a switch on the left here. Let's uh, get the camera off the tripod here. There's a switch on the left here. And that switches between the tractor feed paper, the feed paper with the little feed holes in it, or normal paper. So we're going to use normal paper for now. We see our little uh, control panel there with our lovely Apple logo in the front there. So let's put this back here. And uh, we'll use the same sheet of paper we were playing around with before. Let's uh, do the opposite side. And I'm going to lift up this little plastic piece. I'll talk to you about this plastic in a little bit. Um, Actually, come to think of it, I've never fed a regular sheet of paper in this one, have I? Well, we're about to find out how we can do this. <laughs> so the Image Writer 2 makes it a bit easier. Oh, there's a lot of dust on this thing. Oh, this poor thing. All right, well, it is, it is in the right mode here. Now, for the Image Writer 2, there's actually an attachment that's like a... a, a automatic paper feed tray I saw one that was broken on eBay and I was still tempted to get it but they are not common and they are brittle brittle plastic so uh, unless I find one in person I don't think I ever will have the pleasure of, of having that weird accessory for it all right so this this might be a little bit too tight maybe you could we could adjust the the width here of these rollers let me just try and what a pain no wonder you'd want the tractor feed paper because let's see nope <laughs> let's try it more maybe oh it's oh it's yeah it's a <laughs> it's crinkling the paper it is coming through but it's uh i might not be doing it right also i mean again this is uh this is just me messing around with it. Again, tractor feed paper is your friend and the uh, the optimal uh, method of using this printer here. There we go. Okay. Oh, boy, that's a heavy little machine. Okay, so bring the camera a little bit closer here. Again, my desk does not allow for a full-size tripod and me sitting... But uh, we'll do our best here. Yes, it is an odd way to load the paper because the paper feed feeds through the back and then it rolls up here. Now, if you had the tractor feed paper, these little clips here open up. You see these? And it has these little holes there. And, yeah, so you, you put the, the paper through those holes and it just feeds from a ream of paper and, you know, does a, does a good job of that. Okay, so... Um, I think the way 
at least on the at least on the image writer two, the way to make it uh, do a self print page is to hold the feed button as you power it on. I don't know if that's the same on this one, to be honest with you, but I will try. So let me turn it off. Let's hold the feed button and press the power button. Nope, that didn't do anything. All right, let me Google. <laughs> let's see. This one might not have a built-in test, but let's see. Yeah, so I see there's an Image Writer 2 self-test, but uh, this one may not have a built-in self-test. Let's look at the, let's look for manual here. Yeah, cut sheet is a pain. <laughs> Hi, right, Greg. See you later. Thanks for stopping by. Alright, let's see here. So I have the manual for an image writer 2. That's not exactly the one we're looking for here. Now, I do have the physical book uh, for this. I do have the physical manual for this, but uh, just for the ease of convenience here. Looks like uh, this Apple2Online.com website may have it. Let's see. Nope, this is for the, the Thunder Scan. That's not exactly what we want. Yeah, this might uh, prove a little bit troublesome to find. I know I've seen it, but... Um, let's see. I uh, know we don't want the technical manual. Yeah, it's funny. All the results we're getting are for the, <laughs> for the Image Writer, too. Uh, let me try... Let's see, let me do like a minus two so those results are hidden. Thunder scan! Thunder scans are pretty cool. I wish I had one of those. Sorry, this is very, very boring, I'm sure, but uh, I'm just curious here. Well, you know what? Um, I did get uh, the manual for this and. I got a cable for it too. Now, where I put that is a very good question. I'm standing up to see if I can uh, look around in the room, see if I put it anywhere that is popping out to me. Because it would be cool to play around with that, wouldn't it? Um, let's see. Where would that box have gone? Let me just uh, try the shelf. I'll be right back. Just hold a minute, please.
Okay, well, I did find something. Alright, no worries, Jay. See you later. You probably left already, but that's a good cue for you to exit. I know printing is not the most tantalizing thing for some of you, but this is not exactly the manual I was looking for. But this is something pretty cool. So, um, back last year, I picked up a bunch of Apple uh, support and service documentation from someone in Pennsylvania. And in that box was one of these. And this is a Sam's Computer Fax. So this is like a third party uh, type thing. And uh, they, they did like their own manuals and technical readouts of popular electronics at the time. Uh, I have a few for IBM printers and devices. And this just happens to be for this particular machine. You can see, <laughs> although this is a photograph and you know color printing is what it is back in the day, um, the color of this is not exactly the color of this. So this, yes, has yellowed quite a bit. But uh, yeah, let's open this up. I think this, yeah, this is, wow. Yeah, this is, these are schematics here. <laughs> oh, there's, there's some, somebody wrote some stuff on here too. Um, yeah, this is much more than I bargained for right now. But uh, wow. Yeah, that's not exactly what I need at this point in time. But look, look at this. This guy was trying to troubleshoot it. He wrote down some... <laughs> he wrote down OK, OK in some areas. So he was testing the chips. I think I actually have some spare chips for this. Because the person I got this from, uh, they did repair. And of course, that's why they had these schematics. They could, If there was a bad printer chip or something, they could just replace it. But... That is really cool. It has pinouts for the IC and the uh, terminals and schematic notes. This is pretty neat stuff. Uh, if I ever have to fix one of these things, I guess I have all the information here. But uh, yeah, I'll have to uh, I'll have to scan this in if it's not already uh, scanned somewhere. So yeah, this is pretty neat. This is really cool. Um, preliminary checks. Okay, so maybe at least. Uh, if there is a, a self-diagnostic type thing, uh, maybe it will give us a, an understanding of how to do that here. Uh, preliminary service checks. This data in the user. Da, 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 check all the, okay. Um, yeah, it's just the, 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 the way the head is there. Oh, these are some cool pictures too. Um, power supply. Um, let's see, will not print, check for shortened return, position switch, check operation, check ROM, missing dots, carrier motor malfunctioning, line feed motor malfunctioning, will not print by computer command. Yeah, see, if, if, if I'm looking at these troubleshooting steps and it's suggesting other things, if I said, if I said, hey, I can't print, um, I would assume it would suggest doing the self print if there was one, but there may not be one. On this uh, particular one. Try FF with the power cord on. Is that the... Um... Oh, form feed. I tried the line feed. Let me try the form feed. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's the form feed button. Oh, there we go. Thank you. And you know what? That freaking ribbon still has some juice left in it. Thank you very much, Steven. Look at that. Now, yes, that's a little faint, but this thing's from 1985. <laughs> now, yes, that ribbon is probably not as old, but uh, that is pretty cool. Thank you very much, Steven. I do appreciate that. I thought it was one of those feed buttons there. Uh, I should have Googled harder, but... Awesome. Good to know that this thing has a built-in self-test here. Um, very, very, very cool. Now that we know that, maybe we should print something out to close out this stream. That would be a fun thing to do. But yes, it is a dot matrix. Of course this is. It's a beautiful dot matrix printer. It is a loud one, too. Uh, I'm going to just show you some of the photos uh, in here. Thank you again, Stephen. So now we know the printer works. So we have some, some pretty cool pictures here. We have our, our line schematics here. And then what looks like a photograph of some of the, uh, the circuitry here. 
which is pretty cool. I mean, wow. Yeah, this, this is something that, of course, if, if you were repairing this stuff, you'd want to have around. <laughs> you certainly would. All right, so let's open this up and slide these documents back in here. Oh, it doesn't want to go in quite easily. Let's... I don't want to bend anything. There we go. I think that should do it. <laughs> Your favorite reboot character. Yes. Oh, I remember that show. Good old early CG animation. Okay, cool. So, um, you know what? Let's try and print this puppy. Why the heck not? Let's, let's, we're not going to stay on too much longer, but let's, let's try and print to it. So I'm going to shut down this iMac because, uh, yeah, let's, let's shut down this iMac. Let's get a different Mac in here. So let's shut that down. Let me grab another machine. Yes, I want to shut down. <laughs> Spaceballs! Okay, let me just uh, move this iMac out of the way carefully. And then we'll replace it with another machine we could appropriately test the printer with. Okay, let's get these newfangled USB keyboard panels. Sorry about that. Out of the way. Okay, and you know what? Since uh, uh, we recently recapped it, let's play around with our little color classic here. If it wants to cooperate, <laughs> Bruce will know exactly what I'm talking about. But let's cross our fingers here. Let's. Uh, come on, Bruce. Make this work. Yes, I put a protective uh, <laughs> box <laughs> over the LCD screen. So <laughs> it'll be safe. Hopefully it'll be safe. Okay, so let's get a keyboard out here. Let's adjust the camera a little bit. There we go. And let's get a keyboard cable. And I have like 20 mice around here. And of course the only one I'm looking at is the one without the ball in it. That will not do. Let's, let's see, where did I put that? There's got to be a good mouse around here somewhere. Here it is. Okay. Uh, there we go. Now let's see if we can get this machine turned on first. Then we'll worry about connecting it because... Yeah, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> okay, so let me grab... Let's see, is this power cable long enough? I will use one of these. Very handy. They were about you know, 50 cents or something like that at an online store. Got a bunch of these. Just It's just a little extension cord. And uh, it just helps especially when uh, you don't have too many long cables around. Already plugged in. Never mind. Let's 
try another cable. I have too many things plugged in, but hopefully, there we go. Let's plug in our keyboard. Okay, and let's plug in our mouse. Let's hope this thing turns on. Oh, come on. You're going to be that color classic, aren't you? Oh, you stink. Come on. <laughs> What's the deal? No, it's not a, it's just a little extension cord. Well, I mean, it could be used for the same thing, I guess, Grudy, but. Ah! Oh boy, I'll have to take a look at that. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, come on, you little color classic. Well, let me make sure this is actually plugged into the wall. Hold on. Let's not drive yourself too crazy here. Well, it is indeed plugged into the wall. Let me try another cable. <laughs> Let's plug this directly into the wall here. We're going to unplug the second monitor here. We won't need that. of a buzz there. Okay, it does not like me. <laughs> Come on. One last time. Never mind, this machine does not want to work, but we could try another. We have others. Bad little classic, bad. Okay, let's get the Macintosh SE. I know that works. Well, it better. Oops, I forgot I took the motherboard out of the Macintosh SE. <laughs> so we can't use the Macintosh SE. Um, shoot, <laughs> this is not going to plan. Uh, plan B, plan B. Let's see, what can we use? When in doubt. Just use something that works. Oh boy. Our little Macintosh Plus friend, which is in excellent condition. We'll be taking very good care of you. Okay. I don't think all the help in the world is going to help that little. Uh, Color Classic. It's been recapped. I think the power supply or the analog board may be a little 
Nah. <laughs> but the help is appreciated. It's the thought that counts. It did work on a live stream. So. Alright. Our desk is getting pretty cramped here. We got a big printer. <laughs> we got a beautiful Macintosh Plus. Now the uh, connector cable for the original image writer is a standard uh, serial port at the time, which was like a 25 pin serial port. It is not a parallel port. It's a serial port. Yes, the Macintosh Plus, this thing is beautiful. If nobody uh, has seen the unboxing video I did on this thing. Oh boy, is this thing a thing of beauty. Now, what I'm gonna do is Ah, shoot, where'd that go? <laughs> I was going to use my SCSI 2SD adapter to uh, boot this machine up off of my SCSI 2SD thingy. But uh, I don't know where the SD card is for this. Because this, this I made a special SD card for. Um, it's like a 512 meg card. Uh, let me just see if it's, if it's hiding in one of these drawers here. Because that would help us not mess around with any floppies or anything. I have the floppies if we have to, but this thing is very quick when you're using an SD card. I'm finding a lot of other things. <laughs> it, it is. It, this thing is really beautiful. Uh, in fact, well... While I look for something, let me uh, <laughs> have my hands over this keyboard. That's not going to help. I'm going to uh, put the link in the video you want to watch after the stream. Uh, I'll put it in the chat here. Of me unboxing this machine, because it is a video I did quite a while ago. But this came with its original box. It came with an ImageWriter 2 printer. It came with um, the... Uh, external disk drive and everything so th this is a pretty pretty nice unit so um, yeah stick around uh, bookmark that link whatever you want to do and uh, I highly recommend checking that out it is one of my favorite videos and yeah this SD card is playing hide and seek on me so just give me a second if I can't find it we'll just use the floppies so I have some here but I really need to organize these drawers. That's uh, that's the trick here. That's the memory. Oh, thank you, Stephen. That's very much appreciated. Ah, oh, that video is how you found my channel. I was looking to see how my box plus should be packed, but yours is totally different. Yes, yeah, so there are different variations. Uh, mine is the 1987 model. Sorry, the microphone is pointed away. Mine is the 1987 model, um, so it's the later model. It's a platinum version. Um, there is a, a beige version that was packed a little bit differently, and the box even looked different. <clears throat> I keep forgetting to drink water, and I'm wondering why I have no uh, voice left. Uh, just seeing if I left anything over there. I am terrible at misplacing these types of things. Yeah, I found my other SD cards, but not the ones I'm looking for. Let me just double check. Nah, we'll just boot off the floppy drive. Why not? Otherwise, we'll be here for another three hours looking for the darn thing. Yeah, they made these machines for quite a while. And it's not hard to see why. They were very popular. 
Uh, you could upgrade the memory in them. Um, it's probably something I'm going to do sooner rather than later. Let's plug this in. And while we have the machine turned around, I do need to get a printer cable. Let me go get one of those. Because uh, this does use a weird printer cable, kind of. You'll see. Okay, I found the cable. I should have just had this by my desk, but... Uh, bye, Nolan. Thanks to have you here. Have a good night's rest. We won't be on here too much longer, don't worry. So, uh, here's the cable that came with the printer. Uh, so you'll see there is a true serial connection. That's a lot of empty pins there. <laughs> it's not your standard... Uh, you know, parallel cable or whatever that would have been full of pins. Yeah, this is just a serial cable there. Now, I think, I think, I should be able to use this Apple serial cable to this 25-pin connector. Uh, this was used on a modem, I think. Um, some of those are wired a bit differently, so this may not work, but we'll try it and we'll see what happens. So, let me undo this cable here and uh, this will be the last thing we try out tonight but I do appreciate you guys welcoming me back it's been a little while and uh, a little rusty actually but uh, we're having fun I hope hope uh, we're entertaining me and my Mac friends here go okay and let's plug let's uh, carefully move this aside we don't want to damage any of our accessories here Yes, <laughs> you have dog hair, I have bunny hair, plenty of hair to go around, okay, <laughs> except on the top of my head. All right, so, <laughs> all right, we got our uh, printer set up here, let's just make some space, bunnies, <laughs> bunnies, I love my bunnies, they are very, very sweet bunnies, okay, so let's I don't know where I'm going to put this stuff here. Hold on. <laughs> uh, hold on. Ah. The mouse cord is long enough here. Let me see if I got to um, move the plus over just a little bit. There we go. We can fit the, the second disk drive here. It's actually a floppy already in there. So we should be okay. Let me just grab the power cable here. Okay, all right, so 
Now nah, we're okay. I'm, not, I'm, I'm very careful with this machine. I don't want to drop this keyboard. I don't want to drop this mouse. Although they, they could use probably a better cleaning than what I did in my unboxing video. They are in pretty mint condition. So I'm being extra careful with this machine. All right, so we're going to turn this one on. Ah, that's what we like to hear. That's right, we need to put our paper back in there, don't we? Actually, we do have some tractor feed paper up here. That's booting off its floppy disk like a good computer. Oh, what are you doing that for? Eh, all right, let's try another one. <laughs> See, I compliment you, and then you act, you get angry at me. Macintosh Plus, a guided tour. Macintosh Plus system tools. Well, that should work. Always good to have your floppies nearby. As I was saying, I have some paper up here. Now this is the tractor feed paper. It already has some gibberish on here, but uh, let's see. Let's see if this has the printing software. Yes, it does. Okay. Sorry, just catching up on here. Put the flop drive on it. Nope, read that already. Uh, Macintosh Plus is a little early in the, my collection. When I hear its chime, I automatically think it's the start of the death chimes. Freaks me some. <laughs> yeah, I could totally see that. I could totally see that. All right, so this is just one sheet of paper here. But uh, I will switch this to the tractor feed mode. I will lift up the little tractor feeds. I do have to adjust this a little bit just to adjust the width here. There we go. If it's supposed to be like this yeah, or... Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Okay, so... Um, we should be okay. Wow, you started with a 128K Mac, uh, eventually upgraded to a Mac Plus. That's funny because I actually got a Macintosh 128K that has an upgrade card in it that essentially makes it a, 120, uh, a Macintosh Plus, which is pretty cool. You might have seen that video a little while ago. Uh, so anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's try and set this up here. So if we go to Chooser, let me get the camera here. You're going to see some flicker, maybe. Actually, that's pretty good, actually. Um, so I just went to the chooser, selecting our printer port. Uh, that's the username of the person that, uh, I guess, used this machine before. Uh, we don't have Apple Talk, but we don't need that because we're not, we're not using a shared printer and we're not using a laser printer. Now, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if we have a text program on here. Uh, we do not, but we do have a second floppy disk. Uh, we do have a, this printer installation disk. This may be too old. This may actually be it's copyright 85. This may be for the original Mac, but we will try. We will try. Let's see. I'm trying to one hand this. I'm trying to pull a Grudy here. No. <laughs> printer installation. We don't need to install it, but yeah, I was hoping there would be. Uh, Something else here, yeah. So this is, you know, for your your image writer, uh, via Apple Talk and stuff. So that's a good disc to have. Uh, let's. Let's see. Ah, it's hard to get the disc out of here. Now let me put the camera back on the tripod here. I do have a bunch of discs for this, so let me just see. Uh, this is Macintosh Utilities. Maybe there's something on there. Even a readme file would be fine. Mac terminal. Another Mac terminal. Ah, go to readme. <laughs> it's taking its time. Oh, application cannot be found for this document. Of course it can't. This is why I prefer to use the hard drive, but... We, we, we are not done yet. We still got a few things to try. The disc is so full that the folder changes couldn't be recorded. That's a new one. 
Well, that's a new one. I don't think I've see, ever seen that message before. The disk is so full that the folder changes couldn't be recorded. Okay. Oh, we're off to a fantastic start here, aren't we? You know what? I'm not entirely sure what Mac Terminal is. I'm going to guess it's some type of terminal software for interfacing with larger machines. That's just a guess, but... Okay, file, letter to mom. Ooh, please open. Ah! We got a bomb. Oh, boy. That's why I should have had that SD card somewhere. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's maybe it's in the, the USB reader. No, it's not. Oh, hold on, let me let me check behind my little stack of Mac Minis here. It could have easily fallen behind. Maybe? Maybe. Nah, I don't see it. Darn it. I'm just looking a bit harder here, folks. Reason number 5,631, I need to clean up my desk. Ah, um, I think I checked that drawer already. I'm just going to open all of these. Let me just stand up again. Sorry to draw, draw this out so much. I'm just trying to, uh, trying to avoid any unnecessary... Uh, messing about here but doesn't seem like the things are going as planned so hold please just opening all of the doors just in case it's hiding under something Finding everything else I don't need. All right, well I have more discs here. Let's just try something else, I suppose. Let's see. <laughs> okay, I probably won't do that tonight, Sudos. But thank you. That's a it's a good good point. Um, Steven says, what is the application in the upper right corner of the window that's open? Uh, oh, that's a, a webcam settings thing uh, for the webcam I have here, which works pretty well when it wants to. All right, so I have a box of disks here. Let's see what we got. Macintosh Disk Utilities, that might wor work for us here. A special graphic edition of the Print Shop Deluxe Graphics Library. Uh, let's see. Got a bunch of stuff here, actually. Uh, Apple II Tour, Apple II GS, uh, Macintosh Centris 610. Uh, oh, on the Mac Plus. Um, the window open now on your Mac Plus. This is a guided tour. So let me, let me zoom the uh, camera in a little bit. I was just seeing if I had anything here. That would help. It looks like... Oop, and the discs are on the floor. Uh, system tools. That might be helpful. Let, let's try one of these. Yeah, so... The tour disc has a system folder. Uh, it has a notes file. Uh, one that's named file and one that says letter to mom. Then there's this utilities folder, which has nothing in it. I don't know if somebody overwrote this or that's just how it was. Yeah, it does that. <laughs> uh. Well, we're going to try um, 
this system tools disk or this utilities disk. They're both system 6.0. So let's eject this. Okay. Let's try the system tools. Oh, this printer is huge. There we go. All right, so we have an installer. Yeah, hard drive set up there. Ah. Let's try Macintosh Utilities Disk 1. I have a set of disks I made as the, the whole installer of System 6. I'm trying to think of where I put it. Uh, hard drive backup, disk first aid, system folder. Yeah, that's not going to help. Now, there is a scrapbook file. Oh, yes, that's right. We do have a scrapbook. Maybe we just print from the scrapbook. Won't be the most exciting thing, but... Oh, why can't we print? <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Are you serious? We can't print from the scrapbook? Ah. Oh, print catalog. Sure, why the heck not? Let's just print something. <laughs> I do have Mac right. I just don't know where the disk is right now. Uh, let's let's try this out. See how this works. All right, let's see if there's any signs of life. Again, I might not be using the right cable here. I'm just assuming it's just going to print a directory of the, the files and folders on this disk. But maybe not. Eh. We have the select key pushed. Um. Yeah, what's the dealio? Come on. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sometimes things just don't want to work. Um. Let's make sure it's set up in the chooser. Yeah, you know what? This is what version of yeah. This is uh, Finder version five point three. Let's. Uh, I have a different uh, disc here. Yeah, because this is this is an oldie here. Let's try uh, this System Tools disc, which is uh, System version six point zero point one. That might have the printer built into it. Because I don't think this disc had any printer drivers. Or I don't know. I'm just guessing here. Yeah, you do need the image writer file in the extensions folder on later versions of the Mac OS, but it might it should just be in the system folder somewhere. So let's let's hope that this uh, this disc has something that makes it work a little bit better. And we have a README file and we have teach text. How about that? All right, so this is version, let's see, system 6.1. We are good. Uh, let's go to our chooser here. And we got nothing. All right. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, ooh, 5K available. Ouch. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a printer in here. Yeah, we we <laughs> we don't have any space for printers. Uh, set up folder. Yeah, I wish I had that SCSI card. Um, jeez, let me let me put this back in the tripod here, because I swear that card was right around here when I was messing around with stuff not too long ago. Uh, it's very possible it could have grown legs and walked off but um, have you seen it um, let's see 
Let me just have a look around here because that would solve a lot of our problems here. I found a card, not the card I'm looking for. Let's see if I look at the bottom of this container if I see it hanging around. No. Lovely. Oh boy. Organized kids, stay organized because I am totally not organized. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I do have a SCSI 2SD card that has System 7 on it, but I, uh, 7.1, I do not have enough memory on this machine to handle that operating system at this point. Uh, so that would not help me at all. Uh, I'm just going to check under these things on my desk to see if. It's, you know, it's so small, unfortunately, it could be hiding literally anywhere, so, yeah. Yep, unfortunately, we're a bit stuck, but I, I do have some more discs here. We just, we just need a, a disc that has a printer driver on it. That's all we need. Now, I do have... Where'd that go? I do have this printer disc, but I believe that's for system... Um, where'd that go? I think that's for system 5, so... Yeah, I mean, well, let's let's see. If I open this readme file... I don't think it's going to let me print. Well, well, let's just see what happens. I'm making assumptions here. It's almost 1 a.m. What do I know? <laughs> Print. Nope. Is unable to print this document. Make sure you've selected a printer. I'm trying. Oh boy. You know what? Maybe this guided tour disc. No, that's right. That guided tour disc didn't have anything on it. Um. Shoot. I am just looking around here. It's a problem with the live stream here. If you're not, you don't got all your ducks in a row. It's, uh, it could be a little bit frustrating. Let's see. Another system tools disc. Oh, Macintosh printing tools. Look at that. Okay, let's quit that. Okay, let's look at printing tools here. Now, unfortunately, I don't know if we could... Yeah, see, here are all the drivers. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yes, Dana, exactly. Everything goes wrong when you need it to go right. The problem is we have five kilobytes available on this disk. And how large is this? This printer driver is 38K. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, you know what? We can make our own system disk. Let's do that. I believe I have a blank 800K disk here. Yep, here we go. Goodbye, Richardson from December 21st, 1990. We hardly knew ye. So I'm going to make my own system folder. Um, right, Richardson? Files and info. Well, sorry, buddy. You're going to get erased. For the greater good. For the greater good. While that disk formats... I do have something related. Oh. As I almost knocked the camera over. I got something off eBay that is related to what I'm doing here. Let's see if I could get it out of this package. Let 
least it was packed nicely. Use one of my little tools here to open this tape. I packaged this thing well. Slowly but surely. I swear it's related. Probably just cut this, shouldn't I? I was like, oh, I'll save the bubble wrap. I'll use it again or something. Not if nothing fits in the darn thing. I'm just butchering this now. There we go. All right. Jeez. Sorry that was so annoying. And now we got more bubble wrap, but. Now this is damaged, I'll be shocked, but okay. Jeez. Oh, It's like triple wrapped here. What this is, is a replacement piece for this image writer. So this is the piece of plastic that sits here with that little window. See? Now, you could definitely tell that this beige is not this color, <laughs> so this is very yellowed. The reason I got this is because mine has a crack right here. It's very hard to see, but it's right on the hinge there, and I know one of these days it's going to snap. This, is a, this was on eBay. It's a little scratched up. It's not the best, but, you know, these things are getting harder and harder to find. Some of the foam has deteriorated away there, but you know what? Uh, just the, the plastic window part alone is something that's good to have. So, one of those things where you see it on eBay, you watch it, uh, you make an offer, they decline the offer, you go back and forth and eventually I got it. So let's see if our disc is blank here. It is. So let's name this Mac Plus. And we're just gonna drag the system folder over there. So it's always nice to get replacement parts. Especially these old things, you can't really find too many parts floating around anymore. So when you when you find them, take that opportunity. It's only about fourteen dollars or so. The shipping was almost as much as the item, unfortunately. But they packed it well, so I I can't really complain too much. It might take a little bit, so sorry, but uh, we're so close here. This is a <laughs> we're not quite an eight-hour live stream, but uh, <laughs> it's late enough, isn't it? So the idea here is the system disk we're booted off of has an installer on it too, but we don't really need that. All I want to do is boot up from the system and print out a document. So to do that, I'm copying the system folder to a blank disk. Um, I'm going to copy that teach text program. I'm going to copy the readme file, and then I'm going to copy the printer driver. That should all be able to fit on that one disk without the installer uh, because that takes up extra space. And I don't want to modify the disk that we're booted off of now, because I'll probably need to use that again in the future. So that's what we're doing now. We're just uh, copying over those files. You see this lovely little dialog box here as we're waiting.
So you hear the floppy disk drive going from the internal drive to this one because this only has a megabyte of memory. So it's taking its time. It's taking the read, uh, the re the read, uh, blah, 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 I can't speak. The, the data it reads off of this, putting it into memory, and then it's sending it over to that disk and writing to it. So we're almost done here. Yep, there we are. So if we open our disk here, we have our system folder. It's all blessed and it's all happy. So I'm going to copy the teach text and the readme also. And hopefully we have about 30 or 40 kilobytes at least free on this new disk that we made. Yep, we have 145k free, which is perfect. Uh, so what I actually have to do is, uh, I have to boot off of this disk because, actually wait, can I eject this? I don't know if I can. I can. Okay. It's probably going to make me do uh, the dance of a million uh, insert and ejects here, but let's see. Alright, so let's just copy over our image writer. I wonder if we need this print monitor. We probably don't. How big are you? You are 36k, 37k? Sure, let's copy over. You might only be for the Apple Talk printers or for the laser writers, but eh, why not? Always one of the one of those image writer LQs, the letter quality printers. They're much wider. They're very interesting machines. But all right, so let's shut this down and let's put in uh, this disk here and let's restart. And we should be able to boot off of the floppy we just made. There we go. We got a happy Mac. Welcome to Macintosh. Yeah, I read that as well. Uh, I've never never played around with that. Yes, I will put them in the system folder. I should have done that before I <laughs> before I started the thing up. That shouldn't I? <laughs> All right, let's reboot. Thankfully, it restarts pretty quickly. I bet you as soon as I end this live stream, I'm going to find that SD card. <laughs> I really should have multiples. I need to label them too. It's on my to-do list here. All right, so our printer is patiently waiting. It is on. That select switch is pushed. Uh, let's go to our chooser here. Hopefully we'll see our printer. There we go, here's our image writer. And we want our printer port selected. Perfect. Let's open up teach text here. <laughs> okay, thanks Steve. <laughs> All right, so let's put the camera on the tripod here so I can type a little message. Uh, thank you. I love the sound of this keyboard. Oh my goodness, that's so beautiful sounding. <laughs> Alright, so I made a little message here. We're gonna try and print this out. Let's see what happens. All right, gonna go print. Come on. It's thinking about it. Uh, 
I hope it's not the cable. <laughs> that would be annoying. I hope it's not the dip switches. That would be annoying too. <laughs> it works great, doesn't it, Greg? Jeez. <laughs> oh, uh, where's that print monitor when you need it? Damn it. <laughs> I, I doubt that print monitor is for this printer. I'm just going to open it up and just see. Whoa. What happened? Whoa. Uh, I'm turning this off. The heck was that all about? <laughs> what the heck? Uh, let's hope we didn't destroy our machine here. The heck was that? Let's not do that again, please. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to blow up my plus either. I don't know what the heck that was. <laughs> so opening up made it, ang made it angry, Steve. <laughs> Let's, yeah, it's probably out of memory or something. <laughs> Let's not do that again. No, 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 no. Let's not do that again. All right. Um, let's see what we could do here. Um, I have another one of those cables. Let me see if I could just try another cable. Cable wasn't over there. Let me try over here. No, that's not it. Let me try another. Sorry guys, one second please.
Okay. Okay. So, I got three cables here. <laughs> yeah, I hate that when uh, when you, you're trying to find a cable and you can't find it. Thank you, Dan. It is good to be back. I know it's around here somewhere. It <laughs> throws everything out the window. Yes. <laughs> so, I have three different cables here. Um, they're all pretty much the same looking as the other. Now, uh, like I said, I think some have some slightly internal differences, maybe. Because a lot of these were used on modems, too. So, who knows? But, doesn't hurt to try. Let's unplug this one. What, what are you, what are you, are you serious? I'm un unplugging the cable here, and it's printing a V, a tilde, and a P. Okay. <laughs> it's a little strange. Alright, let's try this one here. This is not the most convenient cable to plug in either. It's really recessed in there. It was clogged with bits. Uh, the original cable does not work with the Macintosh Plus because the original cable has the old style serial connector. So this part goes to the printer and this part will go to the Macintosh 128K or the Macintosh 512K which I uh, am not going to get out. <laughs> Alright, let's see if that fixes things. We could try. Go to chooser. <laughs> it would be much easier to just write down what I wanted to write down on a piece of paper <laughs> than rely on this to print. But, we don't do things easy, do we? I'm sure I have a converter somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> Alright, let's try and uh, print this again, shall we? Alright, and go! So on the image writer too, this select button always has to be pushed. I wonder if you don't need it on the the first one. I don't know. Let's. This is the image writer one from 1985. It's uh, not my favorite right now because the image writer two usually works that hitch. The image writer one here is. Uh, not working at all. Um, the last time I printed from this thing was from a PC. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the dip switches had to be set in a certain way. Ah, oh, boy. Jeez. Yeah, I'm not I'm not fond of this first one at all right now. Not in the least bit. Um Jeez. The heck, man. Uh you know, let's try the other port just for the heck of it. I'm going to try the modem port. Okay. 
Yeah, so I don't know if I if I touched the dip switches back in the day. If I could find the manual, um, I would know what the default dip switches were. Again, I have the accessories box for this printer. Where is a very good question. Thank you, Dan. Yes, this is the one I, I did from an unboxing video, and it, it is quite minty indeed. It is beautiful, which is why I like using it when I can, but... On the other hand, come on. <laughs> well, I know you work. Uh, all right, let me see if I could look on my phone. The dip switch is here. Uh, image. Uh, it's going to come up with everything for the image writer too, though, because that's the much more popular printer there. Um, And if anybody else finds something, like the manual or anything, feel free to give me a shout out because uh, I have the, the actual manual here with the accessories box. I, I, for the life of me, I can't remember where I put it at this point, unfortunately. Um, image writer LQ. Hey, let me go to archive.org. They usually have a pretty good selection of these things. <laughs> oh boy. I'll take a look at that when I can, Dana. That sounds that sounds fun. <laughs> Let's see. Search for image writer manual. Hot Google action. Okay, cool. Here's the manual for the first one. Nice. All right. Let's see. You know what? Let me let me bring it up on this Mac mini here. I could read a PDF on there much better than I can squinting on my little phone. Okay. I should have checked that a while ago. All right, so let's go here. Now again, it could be the cable, it could be the dip switches. The printer does do its self-test, which is encouraging. Um, so let's see, so someone has, there's a few different copies of the manual here. Um, let's try this one here. This is not in English, that's not going to help me, okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's helpful for others. I don't speak whatever language that was. All right, let's try this one. English, yay, okay. All right, we have setting up your printer. Um, let's see, advanced controls. Dip switch settings, page 35, woohoo. Okay, controlling, controlling your printer, uh, changing the standard instructions, dip switches. Okay, does it tell me the default ones? The two dip switches assemblies, switch one is toward the back of the machine, eight switches, one through eight. Switch assembly two is toward the front of the machine, four switches, four individual, followed by, okay. <laughs> what are the defaults? Uh... Oh boy, uh, baud settings, okay. So that's the speed. Your printer can receive data in two different types. This way, so da, 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 da. oh boy. Yeah, this is not too helpful. It would be nice to know the default uh, dip switches there. Where'd that little tool go ahead? Here we go. So let me get the camera here so you can actually see what I'm looking at here. So we have the little dip switches there. We could toggle those and change those. I'm just trying to find out what the default 
is on that. Um, and since Dana has been so kind to post something on Twitter, I am going to go look at it. <laughs> very, very cool. Very cool. That That is a pretty slick little mock-up there. That would be fun to have. <laughs> that would be fun to have. <laughs> a little Mac OS 9 laptop with a built-in printer. The Power Color Style Writer 2284. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. That is awesome, Dana. <laughs> that is really cool. <laughs> yes, please share that. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> that is really awesome. Ah, oh, that, that almost makes me <laughs> forget what I'm working on here. Ah, oh, why why doesn't it just tell you the default ones here? Come on. I guess I have to to read through all this. Actually, you know what? Let's let's look at the. I'm just. I want to look at the cabling too. Uh, unpacking, setting up, installing, testing, connecting. Page twenty four. Maybe it mentions something about these cables here. Now that you know your printer works, you can connect it to your computer. Turn the image writer on. Users manual part two. <laughs> Are you kidding? Uh, Well then, uh, I, I don't know if we're going to make any progress on this, to be honest with you guys. Um, uh, I know this is the cable for the printer, but I can't plug this into this machine. I don't, I, if, even if I have an adapter, I don't know where it is. The only other thing I could try, which I'm not going to do right now, requires me messing around with my 128K that was upgraded to a Mac Plus because it has that port on it. However, that machine's floppy drive does not work 100%. It's a little iffy. And also, the dip switches on that special board to get the memory to run, eh, I haven't figured that out yet. So I can only get it started with two megs, which is fine, but not exactly what I want to do. Oh boy, and Jay's back, just in time to watch me contemplate my life live <laughs> Jay fix it dip switch uh, dip switches dip switch dip switchy switchy switch switch there's a lot of them there uh, we're trying to figure out the dip switches and if that's what's making this machine not happy right now um <laughs> Uh, let's just let's let me just read some of this here about controlling your printer and the dip switches set the number of characters per inch no uh, set the blah 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 no <laughs> Steven if you're trying to send me a coded message about dip switches just type it out man I'm too tired to, to read between the lines here <laughs> uh, it's all right. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is it seems like this, this does explain, uh, what those switches do. So I could just go section by section and just try toggling them. <laughs> uh, control characters, control sequences, functions you can change. The remainder of the chapter lists and discuss the printer functions you could change by the dip switches. Okay. For experts only, these parts and controls consist of letters, numbers, punctuation marks. Okay. I'm not an expert, but we'll try. I'll read your chat. What chat? I'm reading this thing. So you're saying dip switch settings. That's the URL. I'm not seeing a URL come through. Okay, so YouTube sometimes does not put in the URLs, especially if you're, like, not a moderator or something. So if you're sharing URLs, Stephen, I, I don't see one. That's the problem. Huh. This, yeah, see? 
the, yeah, see, I, I don't, I mean, if you want to email me, mac84tv at gmail.com. Yeah. Well, oh, yes, we peons only see the URL as we paste it, but nobody else does. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. Um, you're seeing the URL when you paste it, so I'm not as dumb as I look. <laughs> um, I just can't see it, but if you want to email it to me, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, mac84tv at gmail.com, or if you want to spell it out, I'll try and copy and paste it. Um, yeah. Sorry about that, Stephen. Not, not, nothing I can do about it. No moderator controls or anything that I have could, uh, help you out there, I don't think. You know what? I'm gonna do something real quick. Try, try, uh, pasting the URL in now, Stephen. Try one more time into the chat. And uh, once you paste that in, let me know. Hopefully I can see it. But... <laughs> no dip switches, it's psychic. Good, that's the way it's supposed to be. So I know the chats, the chat and my voice are a little delayed. They're not in sync. But if you can, Stephen, if you want to try and paste that link in, I tried to elevate your privileges a little bit. Okay, you sent the email. That's that's fine. That'll work too. But uh, yeah, no, no, it's all right, man. No, no worries. All right. So let me check my emails. The emails. The emails. My strong bad impression is terrible. All right, we're going to try and check our emails here. Ah, you pasted it. There we go. Perfect. Ah, look at that. Thank you, sir. That was a nice little web page. Ah, the normal dip switch positions. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, see, now it, now it lets me have the show hide thing, because YouTube is stupid, but I will check my email as well. But thank you very much, Stephen. Okay, so uh, the normal switch of switch one is indicated by the bold face letters. Oh, that's tiny. Okay. All right, so let's see. Uh, switch one. If I could actually read this here. So I was not ignoring you, I promise. All right, switch one is set to closed. Huh. Those should be probably set to open, I am assuming. Switch one, switch one. Hmm, hold on a second. Very interesting. So the, the dip switches here are upside down, which does not really help. But it does tell me what is open and what is closed. So I'm just trying to determine by the diagram what... So the normal dip switches are indicated by the bold face letters. Okay. So I'm assuming the switch up means it's open? It's very difficult to, to try and and see this here, but, uh, hmm, let me just continue looking, uh, let's see, switch one to three, okay, that's one, two, three, switch four is the form length, okay, switch five is, you know, let me take a picture of this <laughs> before I start flipping switches. Because even if I mess it up further, at least I'll know where I started from. Alright, cool. Okay, let's try this. Can't screw it up even further. Than that. Let me turn the printer off first. Because maybe you'll get angry at me. I'm, I'm using the Macintosh Plus mouse here. That's not helping me out. <laughs> to scroll on this web page. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right so uh handshake protocol that is set 
to the opposite there. Uh, switch 4 is not used. Okay, well that's fine. Switch 4 is set to open, but alright. Uh, handshake protocol hardware. That is set to off. Uh, baud rate. Let's set it to 9600. So that should be... Both of those should be down. So I'm just putting these in the uh, the order that it's suggesting here. Okay. And then, um, let's see here. Uh, character set American. So these three dip switches have to go up. Okay, the fourth dip switch is for the form length. Uh, the default is 11 inches. Sure, we'll put that up as well. Uh, switch 5 ignores 8-bit data. And that is low. That is already the way it is. Okay, switch 6, six is... Uh, 6 and 7 should be down and up. Okay, so down. My switches were almost, ide almost exactly the way... Um, exactly the opposite way but who knows maybe that was supposed to be that way all right so those should be should be maybe maybe I read this thing upside down last time I messed around with it like 10 years ago but let's see if this works I'm feeling yeah <laughs> well thank you for sticking around with me no matter what happens let's, let's see all right let's turn this back on all right, let's try and print this again. Our poor little Macintosh Plus here is getting angry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Famous last words, Dana. Nothing could go wrong now. It's going to start spazzing out again. Let's see if anything happens. Oh, come on. Uh, why do you hate me? I'll try the select button off again. Although the select button, let me double check the manual here. I believe the select button has to be pressed when uh, you're printing Let's see. Uh, ba, 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 ba. When you're printing from a Macintosh. The button mark select is a select button. When the corresponding select light is on, your printer can receive data from your Apple computer. When the select light is off, you can control the printer with the switches in its control cluster, but it won't receive data from the computer. Okay. Let's turn it on and off again. I don't know. It is plugged in. Um... Oop, I stepped on some bubble wrap there. Let's try another cable, because I'm desperate at this point. This is a shorter one. Maybe this will work. <laughs> My reasoning is awesome. This little Mac Plus is getting quite warm. I'm a little concerned. Hopefully, see when I plugged it in, I made a little boo. Let's go to chooser. There, now it has a hat. Select our printer port, because that's where I plugged it in this time. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't look too bad with the hat on. <laughs> oh. Watch, with the hat on, then it's going to start printing. Because that's what it needed this entire time. The hat makes it print. No, not helping. Um, uh, hold on. I 
had an idea, hold on, or have one, let's see how good it is. I have this thing. It's not a Mac, but it has a Macintosh printer port on it. I am very curious. <laughs> uh, no, it did not print. <laughs> Printing's waiting for printer. Press escape key to exit. You stupid printer. I'm going to shut off this Macintosh Plus just to let it cool down for a second. This is an Alpha Smart 3000 uh, word processor. And it should have the ability to print. Oh, to HP printer. No, we're not printing to an HP printer. Hold on. Hold on. How do I how do I print? Uh finish up as uh, as a PC. Hold on. Uh spell check. Uh darn it. <laughs> yes, Alpha Smarts out of nowhere. To change the transfer speed of Macintosh to Well, how do I print the darn thing? Yeah, but I don't want to print it to an HP printer. I want to print it to an Apple printer, like a normal person would. Do we have any options here? No. These are canceled printing. Ah, oh, boy. <laughs> It's just not going well. Uh, you know what? Let me uh, do one more thing. Let me switch the dip switches to the exact opposite because I'm facing them a different way. So maybe it's going it's supposed to go the other way. Who knows? Let's try it. Why not? I should probably turn it off first. Try the Mac Plus one more time, Ugh. and then I don't know. If you guys have any ideas? It, it very well could be the cable, but I'm not about to bring out another Mac or an Apple II. <laughs> or maybe I oh, am. Yeah, maybe I'm crazy enough to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. I always appreciate your 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 uh, titles for my videos. <laughs> you dip switch. Now I will. Let's <laughs> thank you for the suggestion, Scarlet Swordfish. Again, we go to the chooser. Again, we select the printer. 
And again, we open the text file. And we print the file. And probably nothing will happen. Eh? Eh? And exactly nothing has happened. <laughs> Jeez. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I do not know. So I mean, these cables have so many pins. There could be a, a crossover thing or whatever. Uh, I, jeez. <laughs> I mean, this is the only cable I haven't tried. So just. <laughs> I'm just going to assume it works perfectly. <laughs> I like where Steven's going with this. <laughs> that would be much easier. <laughs> much easier. Huh. Bad printer. Bad. <laughs> that's exactly what I should have. Yeah, that's that's Jeez. How does this is uh I'm surprised so many of you guys are still here. Oh my goodness. This is, I thought we were only two hours. Now we're at two two hours and 40 minutes. All right. Since you guys have waited so long and we've been bashing our head over and over to try and do this. I want to... Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I know where I've seen this plug before. I know where I've seen this plug before. If I could untangle this. We don't need you right now. I know where I've seen this plug before. If I could untangle this poor cable. I already took the board out of it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna shut you down. <laughs> it wouldn't be surprised if it did. I'm plugging this in. Would 
be back in one second. Our good old friend here has a cereal port. And, uh, darn it, it's the wrong gender. Hold, please. That's what adapters are for. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> this, is, this is. Oh, come on! It doesn't fit! <laughs> There's too much rubber around it. Oh, <laughs> so close. In no fit. In no go in. Uh, yeah, the. the Plus cable, um, I mean one straight up says haze on it, so I know that's a modem cable, but these don't have any numbers on it, so they very well could be the wrong one. Yes, there, I'm, there's too much rubber around me. It's very, very clever. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to give you guys two options. The third option is to tell me to go home and go to sleep. I am home. Um... One, I can either bring out the Macintosh, or the original Macintosh I have, which plugs into this, or I could get the Apple II. <laughs> Let's roll those dice. We've been here for two hours and 40 minutes already. What's a few minutes more? So Dana says the original Mac. Just one vote for the original Mac. As I take the hat off the plus, I'm going to carefully put away the plus while the jury decides my fate. <laughs> We're all committed now. Greg says the Apple II. Dan says the original Mac. <laughs> Your Apple IIe is here, Greg. Ah, I unplug all these cables here. Well, it looks like we have a winner for the original Mac. Let me take our beautiful little Mac Plus up here. All right. Apple, is that Apple 3 you typed? Oh, Apple 2 with an exclamation point. I'm not putting the Apple 3 on this desk. The Apple 3 is a very heavy machine. <laughs> Okay, it looks like the, 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 Mac, the original Macintosh won the vote. The things I do for you guys. Oh boy, hold on, I'll be right back. Hold on one second. One second here. I found an adapter. I found a Palm Pilot adapter that is a Mac serial to serial adapter. Just because I know the software on the Mac Plus works. Let's just do one last test with this whole thing. Oh. 
Oh, you haven't seen me delirious unless you've seen that eight-hour stream. <laughs> that, sir, is the definition of delirious. <laughs> All right, so we're going to plug in the serial cable to here. We're going to plug in that serial cable to here. We're going to turn you on. This made a little chatter. That could be good or bad. We just don't know yet. I'm glad I do a good cackle. I'm glad I do something good. Okay, chooser. It's plugged into the printer port. Yep. <laughs> Apple three with a 50 inch CRT TV. I have a 32 inch CRT. That's the biggest I got. Print, your magnificent beast. Print. Oh, crap. It moved. <laughs> it moved slightly. Oh, man. It moved. It went boop, boop. Like it, it twitched. You know what? I'm going to switch the dip switches back to the original way that I thought they were. Thankfully, I'm just flipping them the other way. We'll, we'll do this quick. Okay. Let's try that again. You did, Greg, but I had no idea where it was until I just found it. So let's see if this works again. And it's for a Palm Pilot. I mean, I guess it's the same type of deal. It's just converting cereal, but... Come on, baby. Please? Pretty, please? I'll be your best friend. Oh, you pile of crap. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, it no likey. No likey at all. All right, original Mac time. I pray this original Mac works. I don't want to have to mess around with an Apple II. <laughs> yeah, shut up. It's very possible, Jay. However, if I do the power on test. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's unplug the cable and then do the power on test. Ah, come on. What the heck? You don't want to do the power on test now? It's too good for you? What the heck, man? Maybe I have to unplug the cable from the back? I'm holding down the form feed button and the power button. That should... There we go. Is 
So it does work when it wants to. <laughs> okay, Jay, I wasn't going to go there, but you clearly did. Alright, so if you haven't seen my stream about this Mac Macintosh that I'm going to show you here, um, it's very, it's very interesting. Okay. Make some room here, because I do have to put the logic board back in. So this, oh boy, yeah, I get the point. That's just sad. All right, so we have our Macintosh here. This is not your average Macintosh. It has been upgraded with technology. And that technology is in the form of this crazy board here. And uh, yeah, this is an upgrade board. We covered this in a different video. Uh, this is a Mac Rescue 1989 computer care board. Has six RAM slots, has a SCSI port, and yeah. This thing basically makes this a Mac Plus, has Mac Plus ROMs on here, and uh, yeah. So let's open her up. Easier said than done, I guess. Come on. It needs the ugliest Mac. <laughs> there we go. It's coming apart. It just needs a little encouragement. I'd like to see you take one apart, Greg. <laughs> Okay, so, um, shoot, this is going to be a pain in the butt, guys, especially if I touch that CRT, um, because with this, the way these dip switches work, let me find that website. We were using a website before that told us how these dip switches worked. And I don't want to spend like an hour messing around with that. What is this called? Uh, Computer Care. Now uh, that's a very generic name for it. Perfect. And I can't find the link. Awesome. Let me. Uh Use my phone here. Let me find the date I did that video and I could look things up real quick. Okay. See you, Scarlet. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around as long as you did. I know this is not exactly what we planned. But I appreciate it. Oh, YouTube, I hate you. Four weeks ago. All right, March 6th. That's when this was. Scroll down our history to March 6th. See. That doesn't help us, now does it?
Nope. Okay, install the button to the web. Yeah, some here's one of the websites. Um, I'm just opening all these links. It was one of these links where the guy got it to work. You could hum all you'd like. Here we go. Um, Two megs of RAM, that's all we need. Off, off, on, okay? Off, off, on. That's how we have it set up. This should work at least with, hopefully, with two megabytes of memory. That's all we need. That's all we need. All right, let's, is this, I forget if we slide this down. No, that's right. This this had to be wobbled because of this special board we have here. All right, so let's plug in the the brain cord here. Yeah, it's hard to put this in because <laughs> because of uh, this big upgrade card here, but. Um, we're, we're gonna try it. Oh, yeah, it would help. The cable was in the right spot. There we go. Okay. This should make this a little bit easier. touch the CRT let's not touch the CRT let's not touch the CRT okay now we just need our floppy cable plugged in We're almost there. Okay. Put the case on loosely just so I don't accidentally touch anything bad. Plug our mouse in. Plug our printer cable in and plug our power cable in okay Have a little optimism here. All right. Let's move this out of the way. Well, let me bookmark this site first. Let's hope this thing boots up. Help if the keyboard was plugged in. Oh, we got a sad Mac, you pile of... 
Why are you sad macking? Ugh. Huh. Why, why, why are you, why? Why? Huh. Why are you sad macking? Why, 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 why? Because according to this document, you should just boot with two megs of memory. Eep! Shouldn't you? That's what you should be doing. You pile of ooze, I oughta. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm just thinking here. At this point, I'd, I'd almost like, because I'm not taking this thing apart again and messing with the stupid dip switches. Because it's, it's, I think this thing was sad macking just for the heck of it. But what else am I going to do? If only the dip switches were, oh, they're so close to being touchable. You know what? I bet I could touch them with this tool. You know what? I can. All right, so the dip switch settings. Oh wait, you know what? It might be the memory, crap. Yeah, you know what? That's right. I don't think it's the dip switch problem. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll try just... Uh, we'll try that. Um, on, on, off. Alright, so... Right now it's off, off, on. So on, on, off would be the opposite of this. Idea. It's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. Gonna do it anyway. Ah, come on. I can't even see. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Very much appreciated. Eep! All right. We got those switches switched. So maybe a good direction. Who knows? At this point, Let's just, whoa, what are you beeping twice for? Why'd you beep twice? 
Now don't give us a sad Mac here, please. Ugh. All right. I'll be right back. Just give me one minute, please. It has come to this. It's not actually yours though, Greg, because I haven't fully tested yours. I know this one works. We're trying to get all the variables out of here. <laughs> If this doesn't work, I give up. <laughs> Let's hope so, Jay. Let's hope so. Power works. Power works. Where's that darn cable?
Wait, what the? Wait, that's for the paddles. Oh, jeez. Uh, I thought this had the right connector for the print printer. Um, hold, please. Okay, so I need a serial adapter cable uh, because this has a 25 pin connector. This has a 25 pin connector, but this doesn't. Um, maybe I could just use a straight SCSI cable because SCSI is straight, parallel is not. Yes. Yes, I think I did that on my Apple III. And it works. I'm testing one thing. If this doesn't work, we're starting the live stream again tomorrow because you think you're tired. I am tired too. Yes, it is already tomorrow. Later today. Ow. Sorry, hit the microphone. cable latched onto one of these floppies. <laughs> I'll be screaming either way. Claris Works Apple Works startup disc includes printers. <laughs> okay, Steve. Thank you. Oop. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. startup disk it literally says startup disk doesn't it yes apple works startup no comprende maybe this is the drive that doesn't work apple works startup okay Okay, that worked. Apple Works integrated software. Copyright 1994. Date must be in this form. Okay, sure, it's September 04. 
unable to find timeout applications. Please insert your timeout applications disk. Oh lordy. What do we got here? Apple Works spreadsheet, Apple Works sample, Wheel of Fortune, uh, Apple Works training, Apple Works database, Apple Works installer, samples, <laughs> um, who remembers how to print from basic? Because, <laughs> yeah, um, I have, a, I have an idea here. Help us out, Bruce! Bruce! Introduction. <laughs> that is very helpful, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, all right. I don't need lessons. Well, maybe I do. Trying. Now I'm doing my weird Arnold impression, which is really bad. No. <laughs> print sample or something it's very cute what you're showing me but I don't need to know this <laughs> this is entertaining at least this is going somewhere <laughs> Apple works database Apple Works Installer, Apple Works Spreadsheet, Apple Works Samples. I wonder if the samples disk, no, I don't think the samples disk would have the program on it. <laughs> Bang the data in by hand. We'll get to that. Putting in the samples disc, I doubt that's going to help us because I don't think it's a startup disc. I'm just trying everything here. Yeah, figures. Uh, got a bunch of discs here. Spreadsheet, sure. Why not? The writer? Sure, that sounds like a writing program.
<laughs> That's okay, Dana. <laughs> I'm still going and you need to bash myself over the head. Oh, come on! <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> is this binary for go to bed? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm just trying any of these discs. Printer commands. Run DMP menu. Okay, sure. Okay. The heck? Uh, select a file. How do I... How do I go? Oh. Command cannot find. <laughs> Larry says run DMP menu on the disk. get beeping at me for This is this is my life right now. This is this is my mood. <laughs> At this point, I am just amused. <laughs> Bruce, if I did recapping after this, I I think like I would probably stab myself with the soldering iron repeatedly until I could feel no more. Just looking to see if I missed something. So uh, that's all I'm good for for you people is recapping, isn't it? This has a print function. Probably doesn't, but... Just try. There must be a basic command to try and print. Let me just Google it. And we'll go to bed. I wanted to be fancy and use an actual program, but yeah, yeah. Let's uh, quit.
Well, I mean, this does have the Super Serial card in it, so... It should be able to. Uh, let me just look in this image writer manual, see if it mentions anything. i about to put this away for another day. Hot Google search action, action, action. Okay, uh, sure. Try this. Oop. Ah. <laughs> All righty. Well. We've been going for three hours and 30 minutes here. And the tripod doesn't like me either today. So, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> um, we tried some discs. We've tried some more discs. And nothing likes to work. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm going to call it we'll try this again another night <laughs> i don't know what to do at this point um i'm sure i could find the cable that i know works and all this stuff but it's been fun i appreciate all the super chats from everybody eep if i forgot to eep you and um <laughs> at least you got to see a mac plus a, Mi a mac 512k uh, a color classic an apple 2e uh and an alpha smart printer so <laughs> at least at least we got to see a print the test thing that's that's all for for that but yeah that's that's i guess all we're gonna get tonight but 128k see i can't even remember greg because it's 2 30 in the morning and i should be asleep right now but anyway hope you can all go to sleep uh yeah i like the typewriter that worked <laughs> that worked jay it worked <laughs> this didn't but maybe we'll, we'll get this to work another day maybe it's a dip switches maybe it's a cable maybe it's me but uh, i appreciate everybody watching uh thank you to all my patreon supporters uh you help support me do this crazy stuff so thank you and uh yeah i guess um yeah <laughs> if you want bruce will skype after this <laughs> Take care, guys. I'm going to sign off. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, it's fun to be back. Uh, and uh, well, better luck next time. How about that? I'm going to awkwardly look for that end stream button. And I'm going to press it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And have a good night.